Welcome back to NASCAR America. A huge story today. Penske Corporation is acquiring Holman and Company, the parent of IndyCar and the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, which is home to both the Indy 500 and NASCAR's Brickyard 400. We now welcome Roger Penske and Holman and Company President and CEO Mark Miles of NASCAR America to discuss today's huge news. Well, Mr. Penske, we're going to start with you. I got a simple question, and that is, why did you want to do this? Well, let me say this. Uh, six weeks ago, I probably wasn't even thinking about it, but, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to sit down with uh, Tony George and Mark. They came to me and said that, uh, you know, the family had made a decision or were looking at a decision to potentially uh, sell the assets of the Holman & Company, which included the racing businesses. And obviously, uh, you know, with our background here and understanding uh, motorsports and having been a a track owner for many years, as you know, we bought Michigan in bankruptcy back in 1973 and then merged uh, you know, with ISC. You know, it was the perfect uh, opportunity for us. To me, uh, you know, coming here back in 1951, you know, with my dad as a 14-year-old and to think about, you know, how the sport bit me. And then over the years, you know, tying together the Speedway and our success helped us build our brand. And I said it earlier today, it just shows uh, with hard work and commitment you know, here in the United States of America, you know, a guy can get his dream come true. And I guess uh, when Tony and Mark called me, uh, you know, this was a, a super, super day for me. And about that decision, Mark, to call Roger, I know the track was looking for a steward to take care of this wonderful speedway long term. Why was Roger Penske the right person to be the steward to take over Indianapolis Motor Speedway? Honestly, I think that's obvious. Uh, Roger's racing background is unparalleled. The, the, he, he didn't need to do any due diligence about the history of IndyCar or the Indianapolis Motor Speedway or anything that's happened there over all these decades. Um, but he also has this unbelievable uh, business pedigree. He brings uh, success to everything that I can see that he's ever touched. And how, where do you find that, that combination of somebody who's got racing and a passion for the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and IndyCar racing in his DNA, and yet... Uh, knows his way around the boardroom and brings both resources and access and, and energy and passion. So Roger is the perfect uh, steward going forward, as you use the word. And I think it's really a kind of a beautiful thing that the Holman George family, which looked at these treasures as theirs for decades, now can turn them over to Roger. And, I, and I'm sure Roger's family will be uh, looking back on today, decades from now, with a great deal of pride. Roger, you've been a team owner that has owned racetracks before, but this is unique. This is the first time you've owned a racetrack where you won 18 Indianapolis 500s, and you also now own the IndyCar Series, where you have the defending series champion, many wins, many championships there as well. So I'm sure there will be questions about the conflict of interest there. H how will you handle that? What will be the process for ensuring that competitive integrity, as I know that you care a lot about, uh, will exist there? Well, Nate, I think, uh, you know, one of the things is we put uh, our structure together. Uh, we will have a separate uh, entity, obviously, uh, uh, IndyCar, and the productions and the Speedway will be separate. So that way we have the ability to take uh, the IndyCar series. Do we uh, offer uh, owners a chance to uh, invest? Uh, and I think that from a bright line perspective, uh, you know, with the team we have today with Jay Fry, Kyle Novak and the entire team, I think that I expect, uh, you know, we'll have the same discipline from the standpoint of running the business. Now, for me personally, I'm going to make, I've made one decision. As you know, you don't see me sitting on the pit box uh, uh, in NASCAR. And I would expect today going forward on the IndyCar side that I won't be strategizing with any one of the drivers. Uh, you know, obviously I'll have an interest in how we're doing, but no different than Tony George. And people tell me back in the days with Wilbur Shaw, these people had teams, they were drivers. And uh, I think that uh, I understand that as an individual. Uh, I understand uh, having the stewardship here, how important that is. And, and to me, I certainly don't want to have looked to take this on for me to get some personal advantage. I want to be sure that you people are in the media, most importantly, the fans that support you know, all of these series, uh, that we continue to provide uh, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is the racing capital of the world. And, when you think about the economic benefit that accrues to the region, to the state, uh, and all the Hoosiers here, 
my goal, it's my responsibility to be sure that happens, not the fact that we win a race or don't win a race. It's not even in my thought process today, Tr trust me. All right, so this is for both of you guys. Let's get back to the racetrack. What does this mean for the Indianapolis 500? What does it mean for Indianapolis Motor, Motor Speedway? You guys have said you're going to compile top 10 lists from different people for enhancements, things you guys want to do. Is that for competitors, fans, for everyone straight across the board? What is that all about? Well, I think, Kyle, first we got to think about the fan, don't we? You do and I do every single day. How can we make it more fan-friendly? more interactive, but on the other hand, let's be sure the racing product on the track is the best. And I would say the first thing that we'll do, let's talk about safety. Is there anything we can do, you know, not only to Indianapolis Motor Speed, but, but around the circuits to be sure that we have a safe environment for the fans and also our competitors. Now, is there venue opportunities? Is there mixed venues? You know, Mark and I have talked about that. These are all things that I think that we're going to have an opportunity to talk about. I only had a chance to sit with the key people this morning at 7.30, so obviously we've been on a pretty fast track here. But I'm going to spend the day today and tomorrow I'll be back, and we're going to look at these options, and hopefully we can give the fans some of the thoughts that we have as we go forward to make these top ten lists. So, Mr. Penske, we, you know, obviously this is NASCAR America, so we want to know, you know, how this is going to affect the Brickyard 400. Listen, my goal is to make the Brickyard 400, you know, obviously uh, an iconic race in the NASCAR schedule. Uh, I think that, uh, as you know, everybody wants to win a race at the, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And to me, the opportunity now is we've got new rules packages and things we can do to make that happen. And, uh, you know, we have a road course here. There's other things that possibly could be opportunities for us. But I think we have to, have to f ask the fans. Uh, we have a sanctioning body we have to deal with as far as NASCAR is concerned. What do they want us to do? So it's going to be a joint effort. But, you know, obviously we've got many, many options here that can make a difference. Mark, I know Roger said he's very satisfied with the, the management team at IMS and at IndyCar. He's satisfied with the way comp competitive uh, officiating has gone in IndyCar as best it's ever been. But he did talk a little about what's next for the IndyCar series in terms of potentially going to some new venues uh, in the future. H how do you see today's news affecting the uh, NTD data IndyCar series going forward? Well, in the schedule, I think we agree that we're on the right track. We've been careful about it. We're not looking to expand for expansion's sake at all. There are costs related to expansion. We think we're in some traditional venues. We think we've got a great mix from streets to road courses to shorten uh, super speedways. So uh, we're pretty happy there, but we think there may be particular markets that uh, there, where there may be an opportunity and, and we're gonna constantly be looking at that. I, I think uh, at the Indianapolis uh, Motor Speedway, you know, we put $90 million into the track uh, just a few years ago. It seems like a while now. Um, but, but it's a venerable old place uh, uh, and, a, and a large place. And when we think about all the things that could be done for fans to improve that experience, it, it's really exciting. So I think this process of the, the top 10, 10 list and thinking carefully about what the priorities ought to be with the fan first is going to be a great uh, journey for us to be a part of. So, Mr. Pinsky, this one's for you. Um, I, I, I grew up coming to Michigan. You mentioned Michigan earlier. I grew up coming to Michigan in the early 70s, hung out with Greg and Roger, with your kids, with your boys. Uh, you talk about coming to Indy uh, in 51 as a 14-year-old. Is this purchase uh, and this business deal for you one of the most meaningful business deals that you've ever put together? There's no question about it. I mean, just to dream about this opportunity uh, when I came here back so many years ago and, you know, see the people, the Foyts and the Andrettis and people who made their history here, uh, you know, it's just amazing. And, and to me, uh, you know, how could you top this? And these are the opportunities, fortunately, that I've been in a position to be able to accept and obviously invest in. And uh, uh, this is one that... Uh, you know, I never believed in it would happen, and it's maybe it's certainly a dream come true. So I put it at the very top of the list. And uh, to me, to be here and help continue to build the iconic Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the race, the largest race in the world, is something that uh, I want to be a part of. And hopefully someone can put a checkbox in the, my in my box, in the green box, say, hey, they made a difference. And that's my focus today. 
The uh, talk about IndyCar and NASCAR potentially getting together on doubleheader weekends. I know both of you have addressed that in the last year. What, what does today's news potentially mean for that going forward? I and mean, obviously now you have a track where maybe you could have an IndyCar NASCAR doubleheader weekend at Indianapolis Motor Speedway in the future. Well, look, that's uh, obviously a discussion that we'll have. I think we got to look at that. Uh, that's going to take some discussion with both sanctioning bodies. Uh, you know, we obviously have had no conversation with NASCAR. Does that make sense? Do they want that? But I think uh, it's time to look at some differences, break some glasses, they say, in certain areas and see if that's uh, something that's reasonable to do. But, you know, do we have a 24-hour race here? Do you have a Formula One race here? All of these things are options also. Well, guys, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a huge day for you guys and the companies you represent, but I think even a bigger day uh, for the industry and the fans and everybody involved in motorsports. This seems like yeah. a great thing for everybody involved, and appreciate you taking some time to spend some time with us. Well, thank you, guys, and look, appreciate what you do, and you've been in this sport, all of you, and know the difference. Uh, and to me, uh, it's a great day for all of us. It's just not me personally. It's for you know, all the people that work for me, all the people here that, you know, are guided by Mark and his team. Uh, you know, this is a real team effort, and I think it's a, hopefully a victory for all of us, and most important, our fans. Hey, Motorsports fans, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe before you go for all the latest news and highlights across motorsports.